Hello and welcome to Sanctuary. This is the first of five artistic presentations which we've prepared for Holy Week. We've not done anything like this ever before, but we're very aware that lots of churches haven't been able to meet in recent weeks and months, and so we thought it might be helpful to create some video material to encourage simple, quiet reflection in these final few days of Lent. The word sanctuary conveys safety, a special protected space, and in fact many churches will refer to their main meeting room as a sanctuary. Well, you might not be able to make your way to a physical place of sanctuary in a church building this year during Holy Week. But our hope is that each day you'll find here an opportunity to have a little bit of protected sacred space. Time to think, pray and be thankful to the Lord as we open our hearts to the wonder of his grace. Each broadcast will last about 15 minutes and from this point on we'll run without further announcement. Through words, pictures and music we will consider some of the last events in the life of Jesus helped along by members of New Irish Arts. And so today I'm delighted to be joined by my good friend Sharon Jones. Sharon's an educator, academic, poet and writer and often plays violin in our orchestra. But before we hear from her, let's enter the quietness of the sanctuary with a beautiful performance of the old hymn, Holy, 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 performed by Rebecca Durston on the violin. Thank you. 
We have all known moments of beauty. Sometimes we find beauty in a song, or in the sight of a starry sky, or in the scent of a rose or honeysuckle. A few years ago, I attended a special evensong service in the chapel of King's College, Cambridge. Picture with me. It was a midsummer's day, blessed with a sky of unbroken blue. The sun streamed into the chapel and bathed the whole space in a lovely light. The jewel colours of the west window were resplendent, and the great door, usually closed, was wide open, giving a sight of the lush green riverbanks beyond. In one moment in time, reflected in this new painting by my friend Pauline Gribben, the light and the colours and the exquisite singing of the Psalms of David came together to give just a glimpse of heaven itself. In the days leading up to the first Easter, John tells us that Mary, who had recently mourned the death of her brother Lazarus, and then witnessed Jesus raise him back to life again, took a pint of pure nard, an expansive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Jesus described Mary's costly act of love as a beautiful thing. Her story has been shared with every generation since, in memory of her, as Jesus said it would be. Yet our Lord himself, just a few short days later, would do the most beautiful thing in all of human history. He would give himself he could give no more. Through this most costly act of love, cruel death on a cross, Christ can heal all those who, like Mary, turn to him. Mary gave her heart to Christ, but many others in her world would not believe. It reminded John of the words of the Old Testament prophet Isaiah, they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and I would heal them. God had sent Isaiah out with a message. The people could be healed, but only when they saw with opened eyes, and heard with their ears, and understood with their hearts. God's beautiful intention is to heal our humanity, to bind up our brokenness, through Christ's wounds. John's heavenly vision confirms this. He saw the river of life flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and the leaves of the tree of life on each side of the river are for the healing of the nations. How much we feel our need of healing, of the binding up of wounds and brokenness this Holy Week. Ultimately, moments of beauty, like Mary's expression of love, point us to Christ and his most beautiful act of love and sacrifice on the cross. For all who turn to him, there is hope, healing and life. This poem, Even Song, was written in prayerful response to my own encounter with beauty in King's College Chapel. Even song. Holy Lord, in your mercy, lift the scales of blindness from our eyes. Let us marvel at the beauty of holiness in your house. Gentle Lord, in your long suffering, consume us not. Illuminate our spirits, souls, and minds, our inmost part. Gracious Lord, in your kindness, Heal our wounds with aloes, cleanse us with hyssop, anoint us with oil. Lord of light, shine through us, make us as windows, bestow glimpses of the land of milk and honey and spices, the foretaste of pomegranates, bright quartz of emerald and the glories of sapphire, 
the river of turquoise and jasper and amethyst. Lord of life, give ears to hear the rich psalms. Grant us a vision of crimson. Transpose the music of sorrow into gladness. Lord of hope, renew the promises of spring and eternal days of summer after suffering. Dispel the darkness as we come to you as King. Break the alabaster of our hearts. Open wide the doors. May the fragrance of worship fill this place, mingled with our tears. Let us pray. May we find healing in the beauty of the love of Jesus. And with devotion like Mary's, let us pour out ourselves so that by your grace, we also may do something which you regard as a beautiful thing. Amen. Thanks to Sharon, Rebecca, Pauline, and the members of the 2016 New Irish Youth Choir who contributed to today's broadcast. And of course, thanks to all of you for joining us. Our next broadcast will be available from early on Tuesday morning. Until then, God bless.